In this video, I'm going to show how to go to git and debug source code that's available in a very specific commit. In other words, we want to clone a git repository, we want to look at its commit history, and we want to set a breakpoint in our IDE in a certain revision of the software, which may not be the latest revision. Now, why do we want to do this? Well, when I put together videos, I tend to put together videos that go hand in hand with the git repository. So we can see the Git repository from my plant diary queue. What I do is make a branch for each of the major lessons that I'm going to cover. So you can see here recycler view and superclass fragment. And this branch corresponds with the videos that I have around recycler view. So you see the recycler view video here, but the trick is there are a lot of other videos in this playlist, which means there's a lot of source code here. So what we want to do, first of all, is clone our project into Android Studio. So I'm going to go to Code, and I'm going to click this little guy right here. And then I'm going to open up Android Studio and choose File, New, Project from Version Control. I'll go ahead and paste in the URL and choose Clone. We'll give it just a moment to clone. Once the cloning is finished, it says, hey, do you want to open this project? I'm going to go ahead and choose yes, and let's put it in a new window. This will take just a moment as it needs to open and build. If I choose debug from the application right now, it's going to run the application at its latest commit. But remember, maybe I want to do something specific that's in a branch. So I'm going to click down here on the bottom right, and I'm going to choose branches, and I'm going to choose Recycler view and support, and we'll choose checkout. When I choose checkout, this is now the branch that my IDE is going to be working in. And therefore, if I choose debug now, it's going to be debugging from the latest commit in this specific branch, not in the master branch, which is considered the main branch. So when I hit the debug button from here, we see that it's going to start the app at this point in time. In other words, whatever the last commit was on this branch. But what if I want a specific commit, not just a specific branch? I've reset us back to the master branch just to not confuse things. But nonetheless, if you want to go to a specific commit, take a look at this version control tab. And this is really quite handy in Android Studio because it will show you all of your commits. It will also show you your branches. So you see that the topmost commit is from master. And then underneath that, we have autocomplete plant names as a branch that popped out here. And then maps and notifications popped out. And then room and live data, we see that branch popped out. But you notice that each of these ended up getting merged back in as well. So you can see the line where we merge it. We essentially take these commits that happen in this branch and we put them right back into the master branch. If we go to our GitHub repository and we look at the commits, we'll see that these labels match up very closely with what we're seeing in Android Studio. In other words, you see update readme, create me, readme, add room database instance to our Android Kotlin application. And if we go up here, you see update readme, create me, readme, add room database to our Android Kotlin application. So this is essentially a reflection of what you would see on a site like GitHub, where it's showing you your branches and commits. Okay, so let's say that you found a video or something like that that has a very specific commit and you want to go back to that commit and debug through it. No problem. Just pick the commit from here, right click, and then choose checkout revision. And notice there's kind of like a hash code here, 8257A6D. We're going to go ahead and choose that. And while it's checking that out, you notice that it has that same kind of hex code over here in GitHub. So that's a unique identifier for this specific commit. So now it's checked out, and now we'll try and debug. As debugger is starting, I'll point something out here. You see there's a little caution and then a git. This is where we previously had our branch when we were checking out a branch. Now we're checking out a specific commit. So it's instead of having a branch, it has that kind of hexadecimal identifier for the commit that we've checked out. Now, you typically won't do new work if you go back to a previous commit. You're typically looking at it in a read-only format because there have been commits that have happened since then. So if you were to do any changes, you would want to do it on top of the commits that happened after the commit that you're currently looking at. 
So just a bit of a caution there, but nonetheless, it's still a very useful tool if you want to go back to a point in time and run the debugger. So I've now started the app at this specific commit. And I know that it has gone back in time because I noticed that the map button that I used to have there is no longer there. So at this point, I can snap a breakpoint and I can debug at this point in time. So I put a breakpoint on save specimen and I put some dummy data in here and I'm going to hit save and notice that the breakpoint hits with a blue line. So I'm going to walk through this just to show you a little bit about the debugger. But first, why do we want to debug? Well, I'll tell you that debugging is one of the most important things to learn about programming. It's better to be a good debugger than a good programmer. And here's why, several reasons. Number one, it's the quickest way to learn a new programming language, in my opinion. And also, it's the quickest way to learn something that somebody else wrote that, where you don't have intimate knowledge. Number three, and very much related, is interview. A common interview question is, Let's say I hire you and you have to make a change on some software that you didn't write and the person who wrote it left. In other words, you have no context around it, but you quickly need to figure out how to go in and make a change. What's your approach? This is an interview question that I ask a lot. And some people will say, well, I'll read the code or, well, I'll put in print line statements. If someone says, I'm going to snap a breakpoint, I'm going to walk through it in the debugger, that's the answer I'm really looking for there because... With the debugger, you can go at your own pace, and let's take a look. You see, right here we're on an if test. I can choose F8, and that means execute this line and run to the next. Now we're on a method call or a function call. I could choose F8, which says run this in the background and just move me to the next line. Or I can choose F7, and F7 says step me into this function and let me walk it at my own pace. One really nice thing about the debugger is you can look at the value of variables at the time they're running. So if I go to evaluate expression here and I choose evaluate, you can see the value of a variable when the program is at this point in time. As a matter of fact, in some functions, it will actually show the value of the variable to the right of the variable when you're running it through the debugger. Now, one more step. What if we're all done debugging? We want to just run the program. In that case, we choose F9 in Android Studio, and that says, OK, keep running. And sure enough, we see here it's brought up the login screen. So this was a quick look on how to go to a specific commit in Git or a specific branch, if you wish. Go back to a point in time in history, set a breakpoint, and see how the program ran at that time. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.